Hi, I'm Helen Minnis and this is Lisa Dinkler. Hi. And we'd like to talk about a paper that we've just had published in the GCPP called Maltreatment Associated Neurodevelopmental Disorders, a Co-Twin Control Analysis. Yeah. Because we think it's got some quite important clinical implications, but it's a bit complicated to describe the methodology. Yeah. So, so really just to start off, um, I got interested in this because I'd noticed in my clinical practice and in my research that we would occasionally meet maltreated children who had really a lot of neurodevelopmental or psychiatric problems. So I'd met children who had six or seven different diagnoses and I thought, yeah. you know, really, is this real? And are these children more likely to have lots of problems? So we decided to have a look at this in a population context. And I got in touch with colleagues in Sweden who worked with the CAT study. So do you want to tell us a bit about the CAT study, Lisa? Yeah, sure. Uh, the CATS is the Child and Adolescent Twin Study in Sweden, and it's an ongoing longitudinal study, which is aiming to include all twins born in Sweden since the 1st July 92. So parents are contacted uh, when the twins turn nine years old, and they are asked to participate in a telephone interview. And uh, in this interview, it is assessed for neurodevelopmental problems with the ATAC. Uh, the ATAC is the Autism Ticks. ADHD and other comorbidities inventory, which is a very well validated instrument with psychometric properties that are excellent to screen mm. for ADHD and autism, for example. So in our study, we looked at ADHD, autism, uh, learning disorders and tic disorders in about 8,000 twins. And we were interested in the number of these neurodevelopmental problems they had. So in other words, our first question was, is there an increased number of neurodevelopmental disorders in maltreated children compared to children from the general population? So in other words, do they have an increased neurodevelopmental load? Yeah. yeah. And we found that they do. Yeah, that is what we found, that maltreatment, uh, that maltreated children have on average more neurodevelopmental problems than the non-maltreated ones. And in fact, uh, maltreated children had a six times higher risk to have three or more neurodevelopmental problems mm -hmm. if compared to the non-maltreated children. Mm -hmm. So, so in other words, my kind of clinical impression was was correct. Mm -hmm. They were likely to have more, um, and I guess then the next question was, does the maltreatment cause this? Yeah, and and I suppose that that kind of came about because, um, in for example, studies of institutionalised children, mm -hmm. we know that they can have um, they're more at a higher risk of having ADHD, for example. And so there's always been a kind of question around about whether there's another route into ADHD or other neurodevelopmental disorders. In other words, does maltreatment cause it? So we use the co-twin control design. And could you explain that? Yeah. Um, the co-twin control method is designed to investigate causal effects in observational research. So basically it can tell us if um, <clears throat> an association is consistent with the causal effect or if it is better explained by familiar factors, which would be genetic factors and uh, common environmental factors. So basically what we do is to take identical twins, which are matched for their genetics because they share 100% of their genes, and they are also matched for their common uh, environment because they are raised in the same family. And um, if we then take an identical twin uh, pair where one twin has been maltreated and the other one hasn't, and we look at their outcome in terms of neurodevelopmental problems, um, then we can see if there is a difference in the outcome, then the maltreatment, which they were discordant for, is responsible for that because we controlled for genetic factors and the common environment. So just to get it clear in my mind mm -hmm. then, if we have maltreated children who, sorry, if we have um, identical twins, identical yeah. twins who are discordant for maltreatment, who mm -hmm. differ in whether they be mal they've been maltreated or not, and they actually then have similar numbers of neurodevelopmental disorders, then it's very likely that the maltreatment has not caused the neurodevelopment, the increased neurodevelopmental yeah. load. And that's what we found, isn't exactly. it? We found that actually it, it appeared that um, maltreatment wasn't causing this increased neurodevelopmental complexity. Mm -hmm. That's okay. correct. Yeah. 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 And so we then wanted to look at um, individual disorders, so ADHD, ASD, etc. And we found a slight yeah. increase in symptoms of those individual disorders associated with maltreatment. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We found that maltreatment was associated with a small increase in symptoms of ADHD and autism. Um, but that means 
that uh, the maltreatment could either cause that these uh, symptoms are increased, but it could also mean that uh, children with more symptoms are more likely to be maltreated. So it could go either way. Yes. So we actually don't know which yeah. is the direction of mm -hmm. causality, really. So in other words, it could be that being maltreated makes you more likely to have worse ADHD if you've got ADHD, or yeah. it could be if your ADHD is worse, you're more likely to be maltreated. Yeah, mm -hmm. precisely. So it's, it's actually got, I think these findings have got really important clinical implications because, you know, in Scotland anyway, uh, my impression is that maltreated children are less likely to be assessed for neurodevelopmental disorders because we assume that their behavioural problems are just you know, explicable by the maltreatment. Mm. Whereas what we are actually saying is that children who've been maltreated must be assessed. They must have a detailed assessment for neurodevelopmental disorders because they're more likely to have neurodevelopmental disorders and they're more likely to have more neurodevelopmental disorders. Yeah, yeah. And so... A kind of link thing is that if children have complex neurodevelopmental disorders, there's a possibility, we can't prove this in this study, but there's a possibility that they might be at high risk of being maltreated. Mm -hmm. So we need to watch for that as well. And then I think the third really important implication for me is this idea of trauma-related disorders, which are talked about right across the lifespan. And it means that even in adults, if they've got what we traditionally call a trauma-related disorder, we should be assessing for neurodevelopmental disorders because that child or adult yeah. could have ADHD or autism. Yeah, that is very important. Okay. Thank you very much. Lisa. Thank you very much.